So welcome to this uh, second lesson in our linear algebra course. Previously, we saw the definition of uh, a vector space and we saw the 10 conditions that the operations of addition and scalar multiplication must be met. And today we'll set some examples of vector spaces and sets that are not vector spaces. And we'll also see some identities um, that uh, follow from these conditions. Okay, so proposition one, this is the first identity. And we'll prove it. And it says that the additive inverse is unique for every vector in the vector space. So for every x in a vector space uh, V, um, the additive inverse, um, so there exists a unique, and this is a symbol to say there is, exists only one additive inverse negative x belonging to V. Okay, so in, in, in a normal English, uniqueness of additive inverse. And how do we prove this? We prove this by using the, um, the identities that we mentioned earlier. Um, so, proof. First of all, um, suppose that um, x plus y is equal to zero and x plus z is equal to zero. Okay, so we're assuming that there are two additive inverses. One is y and one is z. So that when we, when we sum it to x, we get zero. No, or sorry, the, the zero vector. Okay, then what, what follows is, uh, obviously y is equal to y plus zero, right? This is uh, Vs8. And what we can then use is the hypothesis that x plus y, um, or better, x plus z is equal to zero, and plug it in here. So this is equal to y plus x plus z, right? This is the hypothesis, hip. But then we can use the associativity of addition, which is Vs4, um, and write y plus x plus z, right? This is Vs4. And okay, now you might think, okay, we can use this. Uh, yes, but not yet. Before we have to use the commutativity of addition to write this part in the parentheses as this. So we get x plus y plus z, right? This is Vs, uh, Vs2, I believe. Uh, oh no, Vs3. Vs3, the commutativity of addition. We just switch to the order of addition here. Okay, now we can use a hypothesis because we get zero plus z, right, hypothesis. And finally, from this, we can simply say that uh, this is equal to z plus zero, again, commutativity, and, and any vector plus zero is equal to that vector. So this is equal to z. Okay, so we've shown uh, that if we do assume that there are two vectors y and z that are additive inverses, then they must be the same vector, okay? And so our proof really is done here. Okay, let's, uh, let's see proposition two. Proposition two. And it says um, that if there exists a vector x belonging to v and x such that whoops, such that x plus x is equal to x, then this uh, implies that x is equal to zero. Okay, so how do we uh, how do we prove this? Um, proof. Okay, so again, let's use our previous trick, which works very nicely, of writing a vector as that vector plus zero using Vs8. So x is equal to x uh, plus zero. And 
again, we can now um, use the fact that x is equal to x plus x. Um, or, oh no, sorry. What we can do is use vs4 to write 0 as x plus negative x, right, the additive inverse. This is vs4. And now use associativity, right? So this can be rewritten as x plus x plus negative x using, uh, um, uh, I believe, vs4. And, oh no, this, this is... This is VS8, not VS4, sorry. Yes. Okay, so now what we can do is use the hypothesis because we said x plus x is equal to x. So this part here is equal to x, right? And plus negative x. This is using the hypothesis. And now we simply use, uh, again, VS8 because this is equal to zero. And again, we have proven that x is equal to zero and the, the proof is finished here. And it is very useful to, to make sure you write which conditions you're using. This way you know that there are no gaps or holes in your proof and that you're using exactly only the conditions and the hypothesis or the propositions that you've just proven uh, to you know write down these proofs. Okay, so these two this is proposition one, proposition two. Now we'll go on to proposition uh, three. And proposition three states that um, for every x belonging to a vector space v, zero, uh, zero times x is equal to the zero vector. Okay, this is quite a short proof. Um, so we write 0x, zero, 0 times x, and here we can use the properties of the real numbers, because we know that 0 is equal to 0 plus 0. Um, or better, in any field you use, right, 0, the, um, the 0 element is simply going to be the 0 element plus the 0 element, that's uh, the definition of the 0 element. Okay, so uh, 0 plus 0 times x, right? This is because of uh, properties of f. And now we can use the distributivity in the second member, right? And write 0 uh, times x plus 0 times x. This is vs6. And then one, once we've done this, is uh, um, we can use proposition b. Because remember, if, if we substitute, if we let a be equal to 0 dot x, then we get a equals a plus a, right? And by proposition b, this is equivalent to saying uh, that a, which is equal to 0 times x, is equal to the 0 vector. And our proof here is uh, finished. Okay, uh, one, one last proposition, um, which is uh, quite useful again. It is, I guess, the alter ego of uh, VS10. So uh, it states that proposition four, um, for every x in a vector space V, uh, negative one, times x is equal to negative x. Okay, so the additive inverse of x. And here negative one is simply the inverse, the additive inverse of the identity element of the field f. Okay, so proof, let's prove this. Again, so we start by, this time we start by writing down x plus negative one, uh, negative one x. Um, what we can then do is use vs10 to write this as one times x plus negative one times x, right? Using vs10. 
and then use the distributivity in the first member, right, to factor out the x, right, this is vs5, um, oh no, sorry, this is uh, vs6, so distributive in the second member, and then use the properties of the field, because uh, we're adding an element, the identity element, with its additive inverse, so this is going to be the zero element of the field x, of the field f, and we're multiplying it by the vector x. Okay, so this is just properties of f, and zero uh, dot x, as we, as we showed in proposition uh, 3, is equal to zero. Okay, so then it follows, um, from proposition 1 that uh, x is a negative x is equal to negative 1 times x. Why? Uh, because if we recall, proposition 1 said that the additive inverse is uh, unique. In, uh, uh, in other words, we know that x plus negative x is equal to 0 and x plus negative 1 of x is equal to 0, to 0 vector. But since the additive inverse must be unique, negative x must be equal to negative 1 times x, right? This is from proposition 1. And that's it. These are the four propositions, and can prove a lot of, ob uh, a lot of other uh, identities. Okay, in the next video, we'll also see some examples on how to prove that a set is uh, indeed a vector space.